Look, fellas, we're in an unprecedented time right now. The king is <laughs> Making it a great opportunity to strike. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love BMF, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now today, we're going to be talking about BMF Season 3, Episode 4, This Is The Recap. And I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points in this episode. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. And as I told you guys last night, your girl, Nicole... She turned up at the end of the episode, y'all. She was pissed off. She's like, look, I'm tired of everybody trying to tell me what I should be doing. How about I let everybody know what they've been doing? And man, she went off. She had everybody looking shook. And when she was going off, as I told you guys last night, she was real calm. She's been waiting on this moment to go ahead and speak her mind. And that's exactly what she did. I mean, good thing is Meech was able to talk to her and everything was good by the end of the episode. But man, your girl Nicole's like, look, I'm not a little girl no more. Y'all gonna respect me. Now, we know in this episode, we finally saw Stax's true colors. I've been telling you guys for weeks, this guy was up to something, and I had a feeling that that was Glock's right-hand man in that car. We know when we saw the This Season trailer, Stax was having a conversation with this guy, and I was wondering what happened and if that was him. Well, apparently it was, and it seems like he's trying to set up Meech and Terry, but we know that's not gonna go as planned, and as I told you guys last night, Stax, his days are pretty much numbered. But let's begin the recap. As I told you guys, if I miss anything, let me know down below. So what did we see in episode four titled The Return of the Prodigal Son? Now, the episode starts out with them giving us Terry's quote. And it states that no matter how much we made or how much we elevated, it was always better to have bro by my side. So that's what we saw in this episode. Yes, it was issues. We knew it was going to be some, you know, some small little things with them. But at the end of the day, they got the job done and they did what they had to do. Now, Meech is having a conversation with Loco and he's thinking about hiring Cena's pilot, but he doesn't trust the guy. He's believing that it's a you know, chance that he could be a fed. So he gets Meech to talk to him because the guy speaks English. Now, they end up agreeing on a deal. Meech will go pick up the product and this guy, he will get paid later. Meech tells Loco, like, look, if it was a fed... You know, a Fed, they will want the money up front. So we don't really got nothing to lose and everything to gain. We know Meech wanted Terry just to pick up the product because we know Terry is in Detroit. But Loco said, hell nah. He don't trust Terry. He wants Meech to do it. And that's exactly what ended up happening. Now, we get to Meech. He goes back home and he sees Angel. It's looking like she's about to get the hell up out of there. Meech tells her, like, look, you can stay here. You ain't got to worry about it. He's going to have guys watching the house or whatever. He's going to head back up to Detroit to handle some business. And of course, the two end up making out and your boy meets. She clapped those cheeks and he told Andrew, like, look, you're not about to be working, giving your money up like you did before. You're going to work and you're going to keep your money. He's pretty much once again trying to tell her you need to value yourself and know your worth. So this whole relationship is continuing to build. I just got that funny feeling Things ain't going to end well because Rodney Greeny Green, he is still breathing, which means he's still going to create problems for Meech and more importantly, Angel, when it's all said and done. Now, Meech returns home and they caught everybody by surprise. They did not know he was going to show up. And Terry, he's kind of pissed off like, man, like, why are you here in the first place? Now, Meech does tell Terry that he believes Markeisha was the one that set up the whole CBS thing. Terry has to tell him, like, look, no, she's actually trying to help me out. She's trying to set up this thing with the judge to see if it can help me get CPS off my back. Now, Meech does tell Terry that he has to move 250 keys and he has to go to the airport and he's going to need his help as far as being distro and help moving this weight. Now, Meech does tell him that you made a bad first impression with Loco, so it's basically making things harder for them to do. But he tells him... Yes, he's going to go and get this weight because we know Terry was talking about it's kind of risky seeing how you don't have a license and you're moving all this weight. You're going to have law enforcement on your back and it's a high chance that Detective Bryant will be following you or watching your every move. And that's exactly what ended up happening. But Meech is like, screw all that. He is willing to take the risk. Loco risked his life for him and helped him out. So he's not about to stop for nobody. He's going to move this weight no matter what. Now we get to Detective Veronica Jen and Detective Bryant. 
We know Brian goes to see her talking about he wanted to check up on her to make sure she was good. But she tells him she want to know what the hell he was doing to have BMF and the PA boys following him. Right. And she says once she finds out what he's up to, she's basically going to snitch. Now, Brian tells her, look, well, when you write in your confession, make sure you put the part in when you help me move two bricks and replace it with synthetic. Now, she tells him, well, she's already switched out the two bricks for some legit stuff because we know she took Saint's product at that crime scene. So she good. She ain't got nothing to worry about. Now, Brian tells her, all you got to worry about is this. Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing to protect my son. So it lets her know that he will do whatever it takes. And if she continues to make it seem like she's going to be a problem, just know Detective Bryant most likely will get her up out of here. Also, Detective Howard slash Detective Burke type stuff. Now, we get to meet and he meets up with Zoe and TT. And I ain't going to lie, y'all. When I seen this, for some odd reason, I was like, man, where Lamar at? Lamar going to pop up somewhere, right? But that did not happen. He was telling her, like, look, I got you. I'm going to take care of you. You know what I'm saying? You know she wants to be a lawyer when she gets older. And she wants to be similar to how her mom was. Meech tells her that Monique will be very proud of the young lady that she's becoming. And that he got her as far as college. She ain't got nothing to worry about. So that was a good deed from your boy Meech. Now, we get to Terry and we get to Markeisha. They're trying to set up this thing with the judge to see if he can help them out as far as the CPS thing. And while they're having this conversation, all of a sudden, Henrietta popped up telling the judge that don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much, he ain't the person that you want to be doing business with, which makes the judge end up getting the hell up out of there. She also tells Markeisha that she's trying to crack her back like a glow stick. I mean, she ain't playing around. Pisses them off and we know it's going to continue to be issues with Henrietta as long as she's breathing. Now, we get to your boy, Raw Dog Charles. Look at him. He lifting weights. He taking this serious. He's like, man, you know what? I got to go back to my high school days. I got to make sure Lucille knows what time it is because I got competition again. And he's, you know, trying to get all buff and he's trying to impress Lucille. Tell her, look. He got her plate downstairs. It's already made. She can go get it whenever. And Lucille, she was kind of surprised. Like, really? Like, you did that? And when she walked away, you know what I'm saying? She was kind of hot. Like, man, you know what I'm saying? Raw Dog Charles, he putting in that work. She was thinking like, okay, I see what he doing. Your boy Charles, he's going to try whatever it takes to get her back. I mean, he's willing to paint walls, make dinner. I mean, he going to do what he got to do. Now, we get to Henrietta and we get to your boy, Detective Bryant. They're having a conversation about BMF. We know that Meech is back in town. Most likely, he is trying to expand the business. And we know Detective Bryant is talking about, well, maybe this is a good opportunity for us to make our move, right? To catch them slipping. And she basically just says, like, look, she wants to take out BMF. If the game plan goes as planned, that means Terry is up out of here and your boy Meech is up out of here. And that hopefully... Her pops will give her the respect that she believes she deserves. Now, of course, Detective Brian is like, look, he does not want to get in, you know, involved in anything between her and her pops. Her pops has always had his back or whatever. So he's not really trying to deal with all that. Now, she tells him this whole game plan, it better go smoothly, because if not the protection that she's given his son, Kevin, it's going to be gone. So she's in there helping, you know, protect his son. And that means after this episode, which we know the game plan did not go as planned, that means Henrietta is going to pull that protection in Detective Brian's son. He's pretty much done for. Well, at least that is the fan theory about Kevin getting dropped off. But we're going to see in the next few episodes if that's going to be the case. Now we get to Detective Veronica Jen and her partner, Detective Amberson. And apparently, cut, he's going to hold it down, y'all. He is loyal. He wants his lawyer. He ain't saying nothing. So, of course, they can't really do nothing to him as of right now. They end up getting some information about that ambulance that, you know, was in that whole thing with Detective Bryant. Well, they found it and apparently they got the VIN number and it's to a guy named Lenny Edwards. So they're going to go question this guy later on in the episode, which we know they would end up having to arrest. Now, Meech meets up with the pilot and apparently it's not 250 keys, it's 2,500 keys. He was completely surprised 
and he only has 24 hours to move all of this weight, which is not a lot of time at all. Now we know they're gonna end up taking a loss because they're gonna have to cut the price in order to move all this weight, but that's what they gotta do. So we know Meech calls Terry, letting him know to call all his people, get everybody together. We gotta move this weight as quickly as possible. And we know Terry's like, man, I don't know about all that because CPS is coming. He has to make sure that he can be able to, you know, keep his son. So it ain't looking too good. But you know, Meech, he's like, look, it is do or die. This is why you got into this business. We got to get the job done. So of course, they got a lot on their plate. Now Meech goes outside. He sees this guy outside working with this white van. Meech ends up offering him some money in order to borrow the van and he'll bring it back. And the guy, he agreed. So Meech, he is moving pretty quickly, but we know we got Detective Bryant on the outskirts lurking, watching his every move, just hoping he can, you know, catch him slipping. Now, we get to Nicole. She got her friends over, and of course, she got over Breeze. They in there having a good old time playing video games, talking, laughing. Lucille walks in, and she's upset. She's like, what the hell is going on up in here? You know what I'm saying? I knew you was going to have friends over, but I didn't know you was going to have boyfriends up over here. Nicole was upset because she thought everything was good, but Lucille, she was not having it at all. She kicked everybody out. She wanted to know where Charles was at, but we know he was still at work. Your boy Breeze, he was walking out talking about, I'll teach you how to handle that joystick, you know, right the next time. So, man. He was trying it, y'all. Your boy Breeze is up in this show, and he was definitely trying it, but we know Lucille, she wasn't having it at all. Now, we get to Terry, the CPS lady. She comes to the restaurant to have a conversation with Terry. We know she has to investigate and make sure that everything is good, and Terry is a good fit as a father, and he's taking care of the family, and he did what he had to do. I mean, luckily, his guys was up in there. They was in there playing around. Terry did not like it, but it seemed like it ended well. Now, Meech goes to this cafe because the pilot had to use the restroom. And while he's out there sitting, we see Detective Bryant. He is out there lurking. We also see law enforcement. These guys, they pull up and they were staring at Meech. Made it seem like they was going to come up there and question him. So, you know, Meech, he was kind of nervous. And I don't blame him at all with all that weight. You don't want to get caught slipping. Now, Detective Bryant thought it was all good. But Meech made a phone call. All of a sudden, those sheriffs, they came outside and they questioned Detective Bryant talking about you was following this van. That pilot let us know that you up to something. And then they pull him out. They find his gun. He ain't got no badge because we know he is suspended. And look at him. I mean, he's Saudi as hell. He really thought he had the one up on Meech. And all Meech did was just laugh and smile at this dude as he pulled off. I mean, he was a little bit too close. A little bit too cocky. And now we know Henrietta, she's going to be pissed off because she wanted all this to go through in order to get payback. Now, your boy Charles is actually up in there painting the house. I mean, it took him, what, 10 plus years. He's finally doing it. And they end up having a conversation about Nicole and Breeze. Your boy Charles is like, look, Breeze is cool. I talked to him and everything is good. But Lucille, she was not feeling it. Now, Charles does bring up the doctor, you know, the whole thing with the check. Lucille instantly got defensive, talking about, I know you ain't up here talking, especially after all the stuff that you've done with Mabel Jones. Charles is like, look, I'm not even trying to argue. I'm just trying to be honest or whatever. So Lucille tells him why the doctor is in town. He's rotating with his job and he end up being there. Charles finds it kind of funny that the doctor is there right when they're separated. So he thinks something is up. But Lucille's like, nah, you just being ridiculous. You don't need to be thinking that deep into it. But Charles did have a point. Now, Henrietta, she gets the news about what happened with your boy, Detective Bryant, and she is pissed. She was like, man, I knew I could not trust that bald-headed, rusty, old station wagon driving, can't take care of his son. Haven't. She was going off on him, and she was pissed off. And it looks like she wants revenge based off how that scene ended. She can't really do nothing to be a BMF because they don't have the one up on them. Detective Bryant was the one that was supposed to be on that. So, Detective Bryant, it seems like you're about to have a whole lot of bad things coming your way, especially in this next upcoming episode. Now, Meech pulls in the van like a GTA mission. It is finally complete. And Terry figures out a way on how they're going to move all this weight. They have to hurry up because they got to count the money and get it back to Elena to Loco. And they was in there joking about um, Detective Brian being arrested and sharing the same cell with his son. 
I mean, they was having a good old time. I'm going to tell you right now, Detective Bryant, he really did screw up in this episode by doing entirely too much. Now, Detective Veronica Jen and Detective Amberson, they go and question Lenny Edwards. They want to know some information about why he purchased that ambulance truck, right? But as soon as they pop up and ask him the question, he said wrong address and he tried to close the door on them and run. But we know that did not play out the way he wanted it to play out. So now that he is arrested, they're going to dig and find out what really happened, which could lead back to Detective Bryant and, of course, Henrietta. And that's the last thing that they want. And it just depends on if this guy is really going to give up some intel. Now, we get to Markeisha. She's having another conversation with that judge. This time, she said, you know what? If you don't help out Terry and CPS, she will put out the information about him making deals with all the drug dealers. And that's the last thing that he wants to get out. So, of course, he's going to agree to help out Terry with the whole CPS stuff. Now, Meech and Terry, they hand count the money and they kind of give us like the history lesson on why they hand count. They teach all the guys in the organization to hand count. They just believe it's more accurate and they believe that it makes the most sense. I mean, I understand that because I don't trust no machine counting my money. I don't know about y'all, but I always count my money when I go to the ATM or the bank. You just never know. Now, Lucille, she goes and has a conversation with the doctor. She actually wants to get some advice from him about Nicole. We know she is talking to boys and Lucille just wants to make sure that she is safe at all costs, right? Now, Dr. Maurice, he was like, man, so you didn't ask Charles about this? And she said, look, I wanted a professional opinion first. So it goes to show you how much she trusts him. And she ends up talking about how he's the only one out of you know their class in high school that actually did what he sought out to do. Everybody else, they failed, right? Now, Dr. Maurice ends up stating that as you get older, your goals change. And he said, just because your goals are different doesn't mean you fail. So he was very humble. He wasn't all cocky like, yeah, you know, I am I'm a doctor. I sought out to do exactly what I wanted to do. I'm the best. Raw dog Charles. He ain't nothing. He's struggling. He didn't do all that. He was very humble. And I believe the conversation that they had, you know, it made Lucille want him even more. And we know he wants her. Now, Meech and Terry, they end up moving all that weight. But we know Terry, he was kind of upset. He's like, man, we moved more weight, but we made more money when we basically move less weight, that's because they had to cut the price in half and they had to hurry up and get this money within 24 hours. But Meech says, look, you got to see the bigger picture. Loco, he hired us because we move quickly and basically it's going to lead to bigger and better things down the line. Now, Meech ends up telling T, look, you should come down to Atlanta one of these days. But we know Terry, he wants to make sure that he got that CPS stuff under control. And he tells Meech, he got to get the hell up out of there. But we know it's a family dinner. Nicole was throwing the dinner. So now T, he ain't going to be able to kick it with Markeisha like that. He's going to have to come to this dinner because everybody's going to be there. Now, we get to Markeisha. She lets Terry know that everything is good with CPS. She handled the whole thing with the judge. I mean, they're celebrating and y'all know Markeisha. She want to give Terry those cheeks. And that's exactly what ended up happening right before he left to go to dinner with his family. But we know she was kind of upset at first because she planned on having that night with him. Now we get to the family dinner. Nicole, she has prepared everything. The whole family is back. Everything seems like it's going good. Meech is there. So, you know, Lucille, she was very happy that the family was all together. Nicole, she does the prayer. And after she blesses the food, we can hear Terry talking about, man, you sound grown. And she was like, look, that's because I am, right? Now, the family, they were just joking around, but Nicole, she was very serious. She stated on how the family is very obsessed with her ever since Meech and Terry moved out the house. And then she talked about how mom was out there having some googly eyes when it came to the doctor. I mean, your boy, Raw Dog Charles, he was upset. She was talking about Terry messing around with Markeisha, Meech having all these different baby moms and them being drug dealers. Nicole, she kept it real. You know what I'm saying? She kept it real. And of course, she did talk about Charles, Raw Doll Charles, messing around with Mabel Jones. She was just tired of it all. And she just wanted to speak some truth. Of course, Lucille told her to go to her room because she was upset that Nicole would even do something like that. But we know Meech. He had to go upstairs and talk to his baby sister to make sure that everything was good. And we know Nicole, she doesn't even really want to have a boyfriend because of what happened to Darius. So she's kind of scared and she's not liking how the family is treating her, right? Because she's a whole lot of pressure on her. 
And Meech tells her, look, you know, it's going to be okay. He does apologize, uh, you know, as far as what happened to Darius in the whole thing with Lamar. And he promises to be a better big brother. He does not want her running away. And he's telling her that everything is going to be okay. But we're going to see, man. But your girl, Nicole, she said, you know what? I got to pull a dirty die and a power book to ghost up in here because I'm tired of all of this. Now, your girl, Lucille, she goes back to visit the doctor and it's after hours. And this time she is telling the doctor the truth about how she really feels about him. You know, how she separated with Charles and everything like that. And that ever since he's come back into town, everything feels just so right. All of a sudden, the doctor, he expresses the way he feels. And then the two start making out. It's getting real hot. You can tell something is about to happen. But Lucille, she pulls away and she's like, nah, we need to hold off. The doctor is like, look, whenever you're ready. I'm going to be here. So you already know this is not over yet. Now, Lucille goes back home. She's breathing all hard. She is staring at her family and she's looking like she just got caught. And they're like, man, why are you looking like that? And she's like, well, I'm just happy that my family, they're all here under one roof once again. My babies, right? And we can hear Nicole talking about we ain't babies no more, right? Now, Lucille, she goes upstairs and look at your boy, Raw Dog Charles. He's like, Where'd you go? You know what I'm saying? And she told him she had to go out and get some fresh air. Charles asked her, does she feel better? She said yes and no, right? And Charles knows what he's doing. That man that went into that bathroom, did about 500 push-ups, put some baby oil all over his body, and he came out just when he knew Lucille was coming up the stairs. And then he walked to that little pull-up bar. I mean, your boy Charles is trying, boy. He is trying, and Lucille... She is slowly but surely breaking down. Now, Roland, he comes over and he lets Meech and Terry know that he thinks he's going to have to step away from the game because he got, you know, a kid now and things have changed. They tell him, don't worry about it. I mean, he's going to be family forever. And Terry tells him, you live right down the street. So if we ever need your goofy self, we will let you know. And they start laughing. We know Roland tells them, look, he will always look, you know, over the family and we know Roland, he is a part of the real story. We saw him in the BMF documentary. And everything that he said in that documentary, it matched up just like the show was as far as the night that Meech got shot. So I don't know if this is the last time you're going to see Roland, but based off the way it's going, I would not be surprised. Now, Meech is having a conversation with Stax. Stax is talking about, look, man, I'm sorry for how I was acting down in Atlanta. And he wants to basically get back good with Meech. He wants to do business once again with Meech. And Meech tells him, okay, I'm going to come back to Atlanta very soon. And my brother, Terry, is coming because Terry said he's going to go down there. So everything is looking like it is good. But we know we can't trust no damn stacks. I told you guys this since day one. And so far, it's basically true. Now, we know stacks. He's in the car with Glock. And he's telling Glock, like, look, Meech is coming back. Terry is coming with him. I will help you get Meech up out of here along with his brother. And then we know Glock is telling him. I will help you get rid of Remy. So it seems like they got like a deal going on. And if everything goes to plan, Glock and Stax will be doing business later down the line. But I'm going to tell you right now, they don't trust no damn Stax either. I see them trying to eliminate everybody. And then when it's all said and done, they will get Stax up out the picture because he cannot be trusted because he talks entirely too much. But I knew once we saw Glock's right hand man with Stax in that car, in that trailer, I knew it was something, especially seeing that he was in the same car as Stax. But the episode ends out with Meech, Terry, Nicole, the family. They're all together having a good time. We know in this next episode, it's about to be crazy. I mean, the episode 5 trailer, they turn it up and it seems like a war is really about to pop off based off all the action that we saw in that trailer. Now, I will be breaking down the what to expect for that trailer over the weekend. So I want you guys to stay tuned for that. I want to thank you guys once again for all the love, all the support, and I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.